The first movie, Brothers, because of a tragedy, a man is triggered to build a program to revive his dead brother into a robotic version of him with real memories by uploading footages he has with his brother. The movie opens with a montage of clips showing the close relationship between two brothers, Andrew and Michael. Dating as far back as their childhood, the pair developed a bond that made them inseparable, and as the years passed, the bond grew stronger. As adults, Andrew and Michael continue to do everything together, from going bicycle riding to playing on the beach. They have a ritual of playfully sparring it out whenever one plays a good-natured prank on the other. The brother on the receiving end of the joke usually initiates the play fight by turning his baseball hat the other way around. For quite a while, all appears to be fine, and then one night, tragedy strikes. The two siblings are driving and taking selfies at the same time. Because they are distracted, the two didn't notice an oncoming vehicle. This leads to an accident that claims Michael's life. In the aftermath of the accident, Andrew, the surviving sibling, is overcome by grief. Unable to bear the thought of life without his brother, Andrew makes up his mind to build a robotic version of Michael, and he gets to work immediately. Andrew works tirelessly to build the robotic body of his brother, making sure to construct each body part with utmost care. When the body is complete, Andrew compiles all the documented memories he shared with his brother Michael and inputs them into the robot. He falls asleep, waiting for the data transfer to be completed. When Andrew wakes up the following day, Michael, the robot, is ready and waiting to be activated. After activating Michael, the robot, Andrew starts to slowly teach him how to adapt to human living. He teaches the robot not to trip over things lying around on the floor and stops it from trying to drink beer. Later on, Andrew makes a few adjustments to Michael, the robot, to make him water-resistant. When that is done, the two make a trip to the beach, just like Andrew and Michael used to do. Soon, everything appears to be going smoothly. Michael, the robot, is learning quickly and has become a companion for Andrew. One day, while the pair are playing a video game together, Andrew knocks down Michael, the robot's pad. And so, in line with the long-standing tradition, Michael, the robot, challenges Andrew to a play fight, and he agrees. While the two are at it, the robot gets Andrew and suddenly it turned off in a chokehold position. Andrew tries his best to free himself, but unfortunately, the robot won't budge and he remains choked in this fatal position. The second movie, She, tells the story of a maid who is obsessed with her employer's life to the point that when she is left alone in their home, she shares her life on the internet, pretending to be rich and claims everything her boss has. The film opens with a housekeeper standing by the side of the road with a bouquet of roses in one hand and her phone in the other. With her free hand, the woman is scrolling through recipes and comments on a blog called The Cooking Lady Daily Life. The contents of the blog seem to make her happy. When the housekeeper arrives at the house where she works, she arranges the flowers in a vase. After that, she starts making dinner while the house owner and his daughter sit at the dining table waiting. The housekeeper smiles to herself as she works, and when the meal is ready, she dutifully serves two plates for the man and his daughter. As the father and daughter have their dinner, the maid maintains her cheerful disposition and tries to make small talk with them. Halfway through the meal, the wife returns home to her husband and daughter, then immediately, the housekeeper's cheerful mood switches to a bitter one. Unaware of this, the wife treats the maid pleasantly before sitting down to join her family. At the dinner table, the family of three discuss the events of that day, and the couple make plans to attend their daughter's violin recital the following day. When her workday is done, the housekeeper goes to leave the house. On her way out, she is approached by the man of the house, who hands her an umbrella. He tells her she might need it since the weather is unpredictable. This kind gesture from her boss makes the maid very happy. She even goes on to celebrate by opening up the umbrella in an elevator and inconveniencing all its other occupants. The next day, after the homeowners have left, the maid is alone in the house and she goes about her cleaning duties. She vacuums the rugs, cleans the floor, and makes the beds. After completing her tasks, the housekeeper cooks an elaborate meal for herself and cracks open a bottle of wine. Next, she rummages through her female employer's closet and pulls out a dress of her liking. She then puts on the dress and poses for pictures in front of a camera. Satisfied with the pictures she has taken, the housekeeper gets on her computer and begins to edit them to make herself look slimmer. She also blurs out her face. When the edit is done, the housekeeper opens the Cooking Lady Daily Life blog and uploads the picture. Along with the picture, she posts a caption saying she intends to wear that dress to her daughter's recital. An earlier post on the blog shows another edited picture of the maid with her face blurred out. In the picture, she is wearing the same dress, and in the caption, she claims that her husband gifted it to her. 
The posts and blog uploads reveal that the housekeeper secretly runs a blog where she pretends to be her female employer. On her blog, she fuses her love for cooking with her boss's achievements and life to create her online persona. While scrolling through the comment section and reveling in the multiple positive compliments her fake persona has received, the housekeeper receives a call. The call is from a reporter named Mr. Park, who wants to interview her. At first, the housekeeper is uninterested in a face-to-face -face interview for fear of her cover being blown, but when the reporter assures her that he would simply record her voice, she gives in. In preparation for the interview, the housekeeper returns to her female employer's wardrobe and puts together an outfit. A little while later, Mr. Park arrives and asks permission to close all the windows because he claims they would interfere with the sound recording. The housekeeper doesn't think much of it, and so she agrees. Once the windows are closed, Mr. Park turns on the housekeeper and pulls a knife on her. He binds her and tapes her mouth shut. He then heads into the master bedroom in search of valuables to take away. In the middle of the commotion, the male homeowner returns home. On a phone call, he explains that he dropped by the house to pick up the maid because he suspected she would also like to attend the recital. Completely oblivious of the danger he is walking into, the man is shocked to see his maid tied up on the floor. Communicating with her eyes, the maid informs her boss of the presence of an intruder. The man is horrified, but he thinks quickly on his feet. He sneaks into the kitchen, picks up a knife, and lies in wait outside the master bedroom door for the robber. When the robber emerges from the room, the homeowner lands a jab in his arm. However, it is not enough to disarm him. A deadly encounter ensues between the two men, and the robber stabs the homeowner in the arm. From her position in the kitchen, the housekeeper gets frantic and manages to free herself. Before the robber can land another blow, she intervenes and strikes him in the head. Eventually, the frantic housekeeper manages to run the robber out of the house. In the aftermath of the break-in, the homeowner is shaken up, and the housekeeper tends to his wound. In the process, he realizes that she is dressed in his wife's clothes and inquires about it. The housekeeper gives no response. The film comes to an end with the housekeeper standing by the roadside with her laptop in hand. It starts to rain, so she pulls out the umbrella her boss gave her earlier. The third film, The Crush, tells the story of how a young student's crush on his teacher turns deadly. In the opening scene, Miss Purdy, a second grade teacher, assigning weekend homework to her eight-year-old students. The students are not pleased with the work, so she promises them to watch movie together the next week if they all perform well. This excites the students, and cheers fill the room. Throughout the interaction, one of the students, Ardal, is lost in his daydreams. It appears that he sees the teacher in a different light. Soon after, the bell rings and the students leave the classroom, all except Ardal. When they are alone, Ardal pulls out a ring from his pencil case and approaches Miss Purdy's table. He gives her the ring and says it cost him a week's pocket money. The teacher is moved by the gesture, and she tells Ardal that she will treasure the ring forever. When she jokingly asks if they are now engaged, Ardal says that he has not given that any thought. Later that day, Ardal has dinner with his parents, and they share details about how the day went. The father, who was a guard and a member of the emergency response unit, shares the details of his encounter with an armed teen and how he was nearly forced to shoot. Ardal finds his father's story fascinating, indicating that he is interested in guns since his father is constantly telling him his stories as a guard officer. Before the meal ends, Ardal remembers about Miss Purdy and asks his parents what age they think is appropriate for him to get married, and his mother responds 16. Later that night, Ardal writes down his plan to marry his teacher when he turns 16. That weekend, Ardal and his mother go on a shopping trip. While waiting for his mother, Ardal is seen pretending to play a shooting game on a sidewalk. Suddenly, they come across Miss Purdy. After complimenting Ardal's new boots, Miss Purdy shows him an engagement ring different from the one Ardal gave her and informs them that she is engaged. Seeing this, Ardal's face turns fierce and angry. Moments later, a man appears by her side and Miss Purdy introduces him to Ardal and his mother as Pierce, her fiancé. The couple have plans to see a football game together, but Miss Purdy wants them to have a celebratory dinner first. Pierce immediately shuts down this idea, saying that he has spent enough on her already and does not want to miss the match. Ardal watches this exchange in silence, with anger on his mind. At home, Ardal is devastated. He folds up the paper containing his plans to marry Miss Purdy, but he later smooths it out. Later that night, he watches his dad hide a black gun and takes note of its location. When school resumes, Ardal acts cold toward Miss Purdy, and when she asks why, he says it is because she is wearing Pierce's ring and not his. 
He also tells her that Pierce is not good for her, and says if it were up to him, he would have taken her to lunch and missed the football game. On his way home, Ardal meets Pierce in the parking lot waiting to pick up Miss Purdy and decides to confront him. Ardal tells Pierce not to marry Miss Purdy, and in response, Pierce mocks the eight-year-old, saying that he is too short and is financially incapable of meeting her needs. Determined to win his teacher's heart, Ardal challenges Pierce to a duel to the death and selects pistols as the weapon of choice. Pierce jokingly agrees to the duel, and Ardal leaves. When Miss Purdy emerges, Pierce tells her what is happening, and they both laugh it off. That night, Ardal sits awake preparing for the duel. He grabs the gun he saw his dad hiding earlier and puts it in his bag. The next day, Pierce is in the school parking lot waiting for Miss Purdy, not too long after she shows up. Before they can pull out of the lot, Ardal emerges. The sight of Ardal reminds Pierce of the discussion the day before. He is still amused, and out of curiosity, he decides he wants to see things to the end. Pierce leaves his fiancée and goes to confront Ardal. In the chosen location, Pierce enters first, and Ardal follows behind him. Jumping right into it, Ardal asks Pierce where his pistol is. Pierce says he doesn't have one, and before he gets a chance to ask, Ardal pulls out a gun from his backpack. At first, Pierce says the gun is fake, but when he learns of Ardal's dad's profession, he quickly has a change of heart. Miss Purdy shows up at the scene and is horrified. She tries to get Ardal to drop the gun, but he refuses. Instead, he threatens Pierce to break up the marriage plans. At first, Pierce refuses, but he is soon reduced to a whimpering mess. He confesses that he had no intention of marrying Miss Purdy and that he only engaged her to get her to lay off his back. As things get more intense, Pierce yells insults at Miss Purdy, and this causes Ardal to pull the trigger. It turns out that the gun is not real, and Pierce remains unharmed. Miss Purdy takes off the engagement ring and throws it at Pierce, informing him that they are over. Pierce's fear turns to anger and he attempts to attack Ardal, but Miss Purdy steps in and protects him. The two walk out together, leaving Pierce behind. Miss Purdy asks how Ardal got the realistic-looking toy gun, and he says his dad was hiding it for his birthday. While looking in her bag, Miss Purdy pulls out Ardal's ring, but before she can put it back on, the eight-year-old states that he is no longer interested in marrying her. When asked why, Ardal tells Miss Purdy that she needs a financially stable man to cater to her needs. The conversation ends, and the teacher-student pair walk home together. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching!